The two-state solution has been thought to be the best option for both the Israelis and Palestinians who have been in conflict over the ownership of the territory formerly known as Palestine for at least the last hundred years. The United Nations suggestion as to a workable option provides Israel the advantage of its territories being consolidated and thus much easier to administer, while partitioning Palestine into the West Bank and Gaza Strip is much like the British partitioning of India into India, West and East Pakistan. If learning from the India experience, it will always be to the advantage of Israel to wean the Gaza Strip away from Palestine administration, much like how Bangladesh independence from Pakistan was supported by India. Sure that the governments of Israel and Palestine do understand the importance of peace, social and economic stability, and the atmosphere required by their constituents in carrying out their lives at the expected levels of peace and security, as now the Israeli and Palestinian populations, after over 20,000 deaths and forced displacement, now understand the need for a clear separation between Israel and Palestine. The suggestion made in this presentation is my own, which I believe, although has few challenges that are more emotional than objective, offers the best solution in terms of contiguity of territory, access to resources essential for country development, and offers each country the space to provide their people the peace and security they deserve. I've been very impressed by Hussam Said Zomlot, who is the current Palestinian ambassador to the United Kingdom. He was appointed to this position in October 2018 by Palestinian President Mohammed Abbas. He is a senior member of Fatah, the main Palestinian political movement and a strategic advisor to Palestinian President Mohammed Abbas, and I suggest him to be the chief negotiator. The negotiation should be face to face with the UN as moderator and the United States and its allies in Europe and the rest of the world should be excluded from this negotiation. Resources According to the web search results, the natural resources of Palestine include water. Palestine has access to fresh and groundwater sources such as the Jordan River, the mountain aquifer and the coastal aquifer. However, these sources are largely controlled and exploited by Israel, which limits the amount and quality of water available to Palestinians. Water is essential for human consumption, agriculture, industry, and sanitation. Land Palestine has fertile and arable land that can support various crops such as olives, citrus, grapes, dates, and almonds. However, Israel has confiscated and colonized large areas of Palestinian land, especially in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, where it has built illegal settlements, bypass roads, and the separation wall. Land is vital for food security, livelihoods, and cultural identity. Oil and gas. Palestine has potential reserve of oil and gas, especially in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. These resources could generate significant revenues and reduce dependence on foreign aid. However, Israel has prevented Palestinians from exploring and exploiting these resources, either by military force, legal obstacles, or political pressure. Oil and gas are important for energy security, economic development, and environmental sustainability. These are some of the main natural resources of Palestine but they are not the only ones. Palestine has also other resources such as minerals, biodiversity, and cultural heritage that could contribute to its well-being and prosperity. However, these resources are also threatened by the Israeli occupation, which denies Palestinians their right to self-determination and sovereignty over their own land and resources. Laws limiting Palestinian development Palestinian development has been limited by several factors, including Israeli policies and practices. Amnesty International has accused Israel of enforcing a system of oppression and domination against Palestinians through its laws, 
policies and practices which amount to apartheid. The segregation is conducted in a systematic and highly institutionalized manner through laws, policies and practices, all of which are intended to prevent Palestinians from claiming and enjoying equal rights with Jewish Israelis within the territory of Israel and within the occupied Palestinian territories and thus are intended to oppress and dominate the Palestinian people. In addition to these policies, Palestine's development has also been limited by a lack of resources. The country's top five most valuable imports in 2021 were electricity, refined petroleum, animal food, cars and cement, which accounted for 1.96 billion of the overall revenues for Palestinian import sales during 2021. Definition. This entry contains the percentage shares of total land area for the three different types of land, namely agricultural land, forest, and other, as estimated in 2018. Agricultural land is further divided into arable land, which is land cultivated for crops like wheat, maize, and rice that are replanted after each harvest, permanent crops, land cultivated for crops like citrus, coffee, and rubber that are not replanted after each harvest and includes land under flowering shrubs, fruit trees, nut trees, and vines, and permanent pastures and meadows, which is land used for at least five years or more to grow herbaceous forage, either cultivated or growing naturally. And then forest area is land spanning more than 0.5 hectares with trees higher than five meters and a canopy cover of more than 10% to include windbreaks, shelter breaks, and corridors of trees greater than 0.5 hectare and at least 20 meters wide. Land classified as other includes built up areas, roads, and other transportation features, barren land, or wasteland. Ownership of land is the most important when determining residency. According to a report by Jewish Journal, only 7% of the land in Israel is owned privately by individuals, with 3% owned by Jews and 4% owned by Arabs. The rest of the land is owned by the Jewish state, which is 80%, and the Jewish National Fund, which is 13%. According to a report by Applied Research Institute, Jerusalem, the preliminary results of the Agriculture Census 2021 in Palestine indicate that the Palestinian government owns 21.4% of the total land area in Palestine, while 78.6% of the land area is privately The Golan Heights in orange is occupied by Israel. If Israel retains the disputed area, then it would also be part of the Israel country, but this could be a potential dispute between Israel and Syria. It should also be noted that the capital of Israel will be Tel Aviv and the capital of Palestine, Ramallah. My recommendation, the immediate ceasefire in all territories designated as under Palestine government authority, overseen in action by the UN Security Council and UN peacekeeping forces. The cessation of all the imposed Israeli restrictions on Palestinians in Palestinian governed territories. The UNSC and member countries to enforce the partition, boundaries marked and borders respected. The removal of all USA and allied armed forces from the Mediterranean and countries in the Middle East. By July 6, 2024 or before, to coincide with the Islamic New Year, all illegal settlements in the Palestinian territories are to be evacuated under the oversight of the UN peacekeeping forces, Israeli government to resettle its deported citizens within its own designated territory. Non-aggression pact to be entered into between Palestine and Israel governments with the recognition of the State of Israel and the State of Palestine as separate independent countries. Embassies are to be opened in each country's capital. Please do like and subscribe to keep us going.